Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this polka dot pattern inside Microsoft Word using macro that is using Visual Basic for applications. So let's open a new document and get started. In the new document we will switch to the developer ribbon. If you don't see it, just right click and select customize the ribbon and make sure that the developer checkbox is being checked. That means that the ribbon is visible. Then we jump to macros. And for this document, we will create a new macro which we will call um, polka or pattern, whatever we call it. And we create a new macro. We click the create button. In order to create this pattern, we need to know three things. We need to know what's the size of our document and how to draw a circle. So let's start with how to draw a circle. In order to draw a circle, we will say active document dot shapes dot add shape. And now we, we here we have to specify the type of the shape, the left top width and the height of the shape. The type of the shape would be MSO shape oval. Left could be for example 20, top 20 and size maybe 10 and 10. We will try this if it works. Seems like there is syntax error. We have to either set select or we have to not include the brackets. Okay, so let's try it one more time. So we have a circle being drawn here in the document, which is exactly what we want. And then we need to have size of the document, which we can access by active document, page setup, dot page width and page height. So active document, page setup, page height. So we will store those inside variables. So we will say new variable page width as long and same page height as long. And we will just set those to be the page width and the page height. Next, we need to know how many columns and rows we will have in our document. So let's create new variables for columns as long and rows as long. And we probably need to know the radius of our circle. So let's say radius as long. We'll probably have more variables in the future, but it should be fine for now. So we know the page size and we need to create a loop in which we will draw multiple shapes. So let's create a loop for counter rows going from one to rows do something and that something will be for counter columns going from one to columns do something then we'll say next counter columns and next counter rows so i will just make this looking a little bit better So we will we have to say how many rows and how many columns do we want. So I will say columns to be maybe 10 and rows to be maybe, I don't know, 5 for now, just so it draws quickly. I will maybe change this to 8. So we have left shapes for the beginning. So for columns being 8 and rows being 5, we will draw this shape, which should have the X and Y position. And instead of putting very you know long expressions in there, I may also define two new variables having the x pos as long and uh, y pos as long. So we'll calculate x position being counter rows, sorry, columns of course, times something, that something would be the page width divided by number of columns, so it's columns and the y pass would be counter rows times of course page height divided by rows so let's see if that works so x position will be here y position will be here we can keep the size and we can try to run this okay so now we have one two three four five six seven and we have one I will maybe zoom out a little bit just four of them that's because as you can see some of them are placed around the corners 
and that's also because we are starting from one we should start from zero and probably have one less rows and one less counts so let's uh, select everything and try to run this one more time so this time we should start in the left top corner and it goes to this one there is no nothing else around the corner here around the edges here and we should have one two three four five six and eight columns and one two three four five rows so that's exactly what we want eight columns and five rows what we want to do is maybe position this a little bit to the right and to the bottom so it's offset by half of the width and half of the height of the space in between so again i will delete everything and i will say that the exposition is something which is this one and i will offset it plus page width divided by columns divided by two and i will do the same for the y position i will offset it by page height divided by rows divided by two so it's always divided by half of the spacing hopefully that will center our circles in the page okay it seems like it's working we just need to offset every other line by certain value and we will do, do this by looking for the value of counter rows so we'll say if counter rows modulus 2 this will divide it uh, the number by 2 and if there is any anything else remaining that will either be 1 or 0 so if this is 1 we will say then the exposition equals exposition plus something and that something is actually this thing offset by half of the spacing we'll say and if and see if that works so if I run this again, every second line should be offset by half of the spacing in between the dots. So that works as well. What we can do now is to maybe add a random size for each dot. So we will we already have the radius, but we are not using it for anything. So let's say the radius, let's say it down here. Before we actually set this position. So let's say the radius equals random time random will give us value between 0 and 1 times whatever 20 and we will also add some value to this maybe 5 so we will not end up with number 0 which will not show anything so the radius will be used for the width and height of drawing each circle i will first delete all the shapes and then run the macro again and now what you see is that those circles are some strangely aligned and it will be more obvious if I just raise this to maybe 50 or maybe I just add 20 to 40 30 whatever the, the bigger the circles are the more it's obvious that they are not aligned they sh as they should be just because they are aligned on the left top corner not from the centers so we should fix this we will probably fix this by changing the x position and the y position to account for the radius so we will subtract the half of the radius so radius minus radius divided by 2 and we will do the same for the y position now when we run this script the circles should be aligned from the center I don't like those big circles I may change those to a smaller size to maybe random 20 plus 3 something like this that should work the spacing on the y-axis is probably also quite a big so I will maybe increase the number of columns to 10 and maybe number of rows to 8 let's to see how it looks like that will create 80 different shapes and the last step which I will do maybe not the last step but the next step I, which I will do is somehow try to update the script that I can select everything and group it together and work with the entire pattern as a as a group and there is actually an easy way how to select everything once everything is being drawn and it is going to active document that shapes that select all so if i run this like around like this it will create all the shapes and after this it will select everything so i can switch to format 
and group everything into one big group then I can change the fill and outline to whatever I like. I can do a lot of different stuff. I can for example change the shapes to be something different because I'm using a standard oval shape. I can actually change it to any other shape so I can use this for example this X sign if I want. I can really use any of those shapes but obviously some of them will not look as good as the other ones. But you get the idea. Just by tweaking the values of the macro itself or just changing the shape and the fill and the outline you get very different results. And I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching.